Funding for Zoom is provided by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. A private corporation funded by the American people. And by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thanks! Lots of you have written to Zoom about the terrorist attacks that have happened recently in our country. Some of you feel like Jenny in Illinois. I think what happened to our country is absolutely horrendous. It just baffles me how quickly our world can be turned upside down. And here's an email from Ashley from South Carolina. She asked us, Have you ever been this scared about something you never thought would happen? Well, you're not the only one. Curran from Utah told us, I've seen a lot of stuff in the news and, well, I get scared. I'm sure a lot of other kids do too. I want to find a way to help out. And Kim of Wisconsin wrote, I felt really scared and I started to cry when no one was looking. Though I wish I told someone because I still feel horrible. Have you ever felt like this? A lot of us have had some of these same feelings of being scared and sad. That's why we've decided to make this special show where we talk about our reactions and hear what other kids are feeling and what they're doing to help others. And here are a few more emails that just came into the Zoom website. Cordelia of Tennessee emailed us this. I feel really bad about New York and I think it's all my fault that I was not there to help. But I'm just a kid. What should I do to keep my mind off that? There are a lot of things that you can do to feel better. Just talking about how you feel with the adult in your life can really help. This has worked for Josh of Tennessee. He wrote, When I heard that news, I was mad and sad. Well, I can't take my anger out on someone else, so I talked to my parents, and now I feel good. Yeah, it's kind of weird because he mentions two very opposite feelings, like mad and sad, mm. but uh, I think a lot of people felt that way. I felt, I know I felt, I felt mad, sad, confu and confused most yeah, of all. I was yeah, like, yeah. yeah. One of my classes had just gotten done, and I was going into a different class, and they had the TV on. And um, I was like, whoa, that's in New York. And I was like, that's, that's in the United States. Yeah. And I was like, wow, how can this be happening? I felt so sad, because I've been to the World Trade Center before. Really? It's a great yeah. place. And I, I was just there a couple of years ago, and I felt so sad. Yeah, I was at school also. The kids didn't know. They were like, oh, just this big thing just happened and we want to wait till you get home so your parents can explain it to you so how did you like feel when you first when you first learned about it how did you feel yeah. I was sad but I was also scared like will this lead us into a like a really big war or like like I, I think it will like I don't want to think that I think it's kind of hard not scary. to be scared because mm -hmm. yeah. it's never it's never happened in this country before, before. I know mm -hmm. that's why everyone has these weird feelings all the, this mixture of feelings and especially being scared because you, you don't know what to expect you don't know what's mm -hmm. next yeah, and yeah. if you don't know I mean what's going on and what's happening and you have so many questions then it, it becomes kind of like you're I got really scared I mean after I um, didn't know what was happening but once I think I sat down and talked about it with my family I felt a lot better yeah. that I knew that I knew a lot more well my parents um, are out of the country and so when I heard about the tragedy I was it was really scary to not have them to talk to and I was just wondering if they're okay and but um, my sister um, Ivy she came up to watch me and my sister and she was really good at comforting me and like we just talked about it and also my teacher and a few of my friends we just sat down during recess it's never it's never gonna be the same anymore like everyone's gonna be like scared you bring up a good point are, are a lot of you scared are there things that yeah. what, what are things you're scared of I'm scared of flying again war and war the, the thought of going to war is just so awful because like you you read in your history textbooks about war and like um, all these awful things that happened and like you can't really imagine what it would be like to go through a war and I think it's important that we remember that this was an you know an isolated group of people a couple I was really upset and mm -hmm. I was just shocked and I needed to get like all my feelings out mm -hmm. so I felt a lot better after that too to just talk with my friends about it my mom's a flight attendant and so and so she's she was kind of, you know, scared, and she knew some of the people and things like that. And so she picked up me and my sister, and we were like, what happened? We, we only know this much. What happened? Yeah. So how are you doing? Sad. Yeah. It's like so confusing. I don't know what's going to happen. So 
Right. Scary. Yeah, and mommy, it must have been hard for you because you're like a flight attendant, right? Yeah, I know. It, it, it is hard. You know, my heart goes out to all those flight attendants, and it's, you know, I'm a little scared about going back to work, and I know you guys are worried. I'm glad you weren't flying to New York. I know, I'm glad I wasn't too. Were you worried, Jake? Yeah. Yeah. Did they talk a lot about it at school? Yeah. Didn't you write some letters yep. to school? You, did. you wrote Thank letters you. to New York? Yep. That's nice. That's nice. Yeah. We send a lot of letters to the Red Cross. Oh, that's nice. That's good. I, I remember going to bed that night. I, I remember that I was telling you. I was so scared. And I wasn't afraid that people were going to come down like in planes and hit our town, but I was afraid that war was going to like break out that night and attack. It was really quiet that night too, yeah. in the airplanes. I thought yeah. they were going to come and attack us, I was really afraid. Yeah. yeah. I, I kind of realized that they never used to mention God on the news a lot or thanking God, but now everyone, it's just brought them so much closer to God and everyone's been saying God help us through this. This brings out a lot of feelings for everybody. I was I was afraid that we are going to get hurt and I was afraid that our country was going to go to war and I still am but and yeah. And one thing that I did with my family was we uh, kind of watched the news together and mm -hmm. we kind of talked mm -hmm. about it as it went on and then afterwards we kind of just talked to each other about all the facts all the stuff um, we were feeling, and uh, it kind of helped. It helped out a lot. I thought it was great. That's I mean, why it's really important to have someone that you can that you can talk to and share your feelings with, so they can comfort you and answer your questions. So, yeah, I'm really glad we all have people. I mean, that yeah, we can I mean, that we can talk to. Yeah. None of us here at Zoom were in New York when the towers were hit, but here are some kids who told us what it was like for them. These kids live in Brooklyn, right across the river from the World Trade Center. I was in school when it happened, and kids were saying that the World Trade Center's were on fire, and the teachers were telling them not to start rumors, and then um, I said that I smelled smoke going through the windows. And then that's when we saw the second plane hit the building, and it was just like a big flash, and we saw the flames and everything and the smoke. And I looked out the window and ashes were falling. People thought it was snow. I was just kind of shocked because I never thought anything like this would happen in the U.S. Because in the 12 years that I've lived, I've never seen something like this. When I used to look at the World Trade Center, I, I thought they were really big and cool, and I always wondered what it was like inside, but I guess I'm never going to see that. Well, in a situation like this, I think kids can, um, I guess, help out at hospitals. They should maybe make sandwiches for the firemen and people on my block they made a big sign we splattered paint all over it and then after we dried that um we wrote the letters the sign said thank you Nor new york's finest and bravest when we were done we hung it up on those trees over there and um we asked people to sign it and we left some markers there and overnight um, hundreds of people had signed it. Making the sign made me feel proud and um, it kind of made me feel good. Many kids feel like the kids in Brooklyn feel, even though they don't live in New York or Washington where the attacks happened. Angela of Illinois wrote, this isn't stuff that just happens once in a while. It happens never, and that's why I feel so overwhelmed by it. Many other kids from around the country have really been affected by these events. I was scared, and I didn't know what was going to happen. I was shocked. I was just kind of confused because I didn't understand why anyone would do this. I felt, like, really bad what had happened to America. I felt sad, and I felt like I didn't know you know, how exactly to react, and it was like, how could this happen here? I think it's really hard to put it behind you and not not um, pay attention to it too much, but I know you can turn, um, like, what I, I know I've been 
trying to turn the negatives into positives mm -hmm. and yeah. doing good things or making yourself feel better, like hanging up flags. I've been uh, collecting the newspapers from uh, since the tragedy, and I have a ton of newspapers stacking up, and I would like to collect those so, like, in the years to come, I can look back and mm -hmm. find out the facts, mm -hmm. what actually yeah. happened. Yeah. And, like, when I'm older, like, I might have, like, grandkids or something, they're like, Daddy, I want to learn about <laughs> <laughs> So then I'll just be That's like, oh, here's idea. a newspaper. Yeah. That's, That's a good bad. idea. Yeah, that is a good idea. I did a lot of things. I actually had a, a candlelight vigil at my house, and uh, I also oh. read this book. It was called It Was Wings by like, Christopher Myers, and it was about this boy who had a set of wings, and he everyone was um, making fun of him and laughing at him because he was different, mm -hmm. oh. or he had. And uh, it, I think it kind of relates to what's going on, but people targeting other people just because mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they think they're with the same yeah. people who did the yeah. tragedy. In front of my house, um, there's a fence, and my dad painted it white. And then all the kids in my neighborhood, we came up and we painted on it, and we have so it's covered in like pictures and all and prayers and things like that. I think it's really nice. That's that is a nice thing to do. Anybody else do anything with the well, community? In my school, um, like in our cafeteria, we put cans out at our lunch. And we had we had like kind of like two fun drives going on. I mean, we raised a lot of money, and wow. yeah, we sent it to a bank, and we had and they doubled our money. They doubled wow. the money, so we had like oh. we had almost like ten thousand dollars. Like after the whole money. after like That's after the good. bank had doubled it. That's cool. That that was sent out. At my after school actually, we um, made cards and we drew pictures, and we brought them to our local fire department. Hi. Hi. After school, may I do some cards and some pictures to thank you for everything you've done for our community. Very good. Thank you. Because even though they're not in New York, we just showed them that anytime we appreciate them any day because they're there to help us when we need it. We're, we're happy to do our job, but it's nice to get recognized now and then too. And we thank you for them. There are lots of other kids who have made drawings to show their appreciation for the rescue workers, firemen, and policemen, like these second graders in Indiana. This is Miss Garl and Mrs. Lee's second grade class in Bloomington, Indiana. We've been talking a lot about the disasters. It's sad because America is hoarding. Our teacher asked us to draw pictures of what America needs to feel better. I think America needs to be talking about what happened. Uh, you can help somebody else by uh, talking to each other about what happened and sharing your feelings. A friend needs help, you help them. My picture is about friendship. I picked respect because it's nice to help people when they're hurt. Respect means that you're kind. I think America needs um, love and caring because if we started pushing, we would hurt everyone and then we couldn't play that much and we couldn't be healthy. When you care for somebody, you should give them love. Love and humor helps us feel better. Here are what some kids in New York City are doing to help rescue workers. Kids from the Grace Church School have collected juice, batteries, and sandwich bags. Now let's meet a girl who really wanted to do something to help because she lives right near the World Trade Center. My name is Gemma. I live in New York City and I'm 12 years old. My neighborhood's called Tribeca. My old elementary school is about six blocks from the World Trade Center. Hey, folks, please clear the street. After the tragedy took place, you know, you see all these tired workers been doing stuff all day and people covered in dust and everything. You really need to do something about it. The cookies were a combination of my mom and my idea. Bag of chocolate chunks. It looks good. They've just come out of a disaster zone and then when they get a cookie, it's like something that their mom used to make them. Um, the helping makes me feel like I'm participating. I'm also someone who's working to make this community back to how it used to be and make our little town kind of normal again, if we're ever going to be normal. There we go, train number three. Thank 
you. Thank you very much. Chocolate raisin? Absolutely. All right. You want one? Yes, I made them. Now you have to take one. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Chocolate cookie? Homemade? All right. How do I resist her? Look at her. How can I resist you? I'd have to say, they are really good. I really want to stay in this neighborhood. I know a lot of people are going away because they feel it's unsafe, but this is my neighborhood. This is where I grew up, and this is where I want to be. It's where we are, and we're going to work here, and we're going to stay here. Tragic events like these often motivate people to try to help out. But even if you don't live in New York or Washington, D.C., you can make a difference by volunteering in your own community. The kids in my school have felt somewhat helpless about the events that have taken place recently in our country. So we decided to hold a blood drive. And all the blood that is taken here today will be donated to the Red Cross to help the victims in the tragic events that have happened. And we're really successful. Um, we've had about a four hour wait this morning for people to donate blood. So we're really happy with our success. Since the kids at my school can't donate blood, we decided to bring in some snacks for the people before and after they donate their blood. And since the kids brought in so many snacks, we're going to use these snacks towards our second blood drive. At a time like this, it's really great to do things with members of your community to express how you are feeling and to lend support for other people. Remember, coming together as a community will unite us and make us strong. Tonight, my family, friends, and neighbors are gathering together to hold a candlelight vigil in memory of all the tragic events that have happened recently in our country. We're going to light some candles and just say a few words. Let us think about all those people that were involved in the events that have happened recently in our country. Let's think about all those people who are looking for someone, for someone they love. Think about all those mothers, fathers, children, parents who might have lost someone. Let's think about the firefighters, the police officers, the volunteers, all those people. Give them strength and hope to guide them through the next day, the next week, month and year, and the rest of their lives. Let's think about all those people now. Oh, beautiful, four spacious skies forever. Sadako was a young girl who lived in Hiroshima, Japan. She became ill with leukemia caused from the radiation of the bombings that occurred in Japan. While Sadako was being hospitalized, a close friend reminded her of a legend that said anyone who could fold a thousand cranes might be granted a wish. Sadako began on her task, all the while folding the cranes from her hospital bed. She never finished and she died at the age of 12. Sadako never gave up and the cranes became a symbol of peace. Hi, I'm Gabba. I live in Seattle, Washington and I'm here at the Peace Park. When I first heard about the terrorists' attack, I got really scared. Me and my friend Laura were talking about what we could do that might acknowledge those thousands of people that had died. And I thought that folding cranes would send a message of peace. It's not just my wish, it's everyone here. We're thinking about folding 5,000 cranes for all the people who are lost. I'm hoping to make one for every person that is missing or has died and send them to New York or DC and maybe even some to Pittsburgh. I'd like the kids in New York to know that people are thinking about them and wishing for their safety and their well-being. I think right now is a good time for our country to have compassion and I don't think it's appropriate for everyone to be hating. Sadako said of the cranes, I will write peace on your wings and you will fly all over the world. I hope my message goes out with Sadako's. Being patriotic by thinking about and expressing your pride for our country can really help during a time like this. Here's an email from a girl named Hollywood who lives in Connecticut. She wrote, It's just like the game Red Rover. If we hold on to each other, they can't knock us down. Hold on, America.
That's so that's nice. Cool. That's, nice. Yeah. that's a really that's good way of looking at it. I know, it's a good, it. yeah, it's, it's a really good way of looking at it. It's a thing that I've heard a lot. United we stand, but divided yeah, we, we fall. fall. Mm -hmm. yeah. Same thing in Red Rover. If you, you, if everyone holds on tight, then no one will get no through. No one's going to get through. Right. But if one person decides to let go, then, yeah. then everything yeah. goes down from there. Well, has anyone ever, has anyone in the past couple of days ex or week have expressed mm. a lot of patriotism? Patriotism mm -hmm. in any way? Oh, I have this uh, cool patriotic hat that I bought. <laughs> 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 this Uncle Sam hat, and I've been wearing it. Right? Oh, that's cool. wearing it that's awesome. Well. It's awesome. Yeah, um, my family, um, we hung up a big American flag over our front door. Mm. And I did so, too. I have a huge one. Really? Over your front door? <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's a awesome. lot of people that have really big flags. It's awesome. Patriotism also doesn't have to just be like an American. Yeah. Like it can be in other countries too. Yeah. Like, I'm Haitian. Mm -hmm. I'm also an American citizen because I was born in America. But that doesn't mean, like, you know, America's number one. Mm -hmm. Because Haiti, I'm, I've been to Haiti. I love Haiti. Mm -hmm. I love America. I love them both. They're both number one to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Everyone just can't get into thinking, like, America's the best. I don't yeah. think a lot of people think yeah. that way, but a lot of people are taking their anger out on Muslims. Right. Mm -hmm. People that remind them of um, the guys that were part of the um, bombing. And uh, my friend, he goes to her school, and a lot of people, he's, I think he's Muslim, and a lot of people are um, beating him up and making fun wow. of him. So mean. I just think that people need to realize that um, he's an American just like us, and because yeah, they don't have yeah. anything to do with well, it. We have to remember that they, I mean, immigrants came to our country to have a better life, yeah. and we can't yeah. be sending yeah. them away just That's because true. they're different. I mean, we have to welcome them. Yeah. Like, so they're from America, too. It's their part of their home. Yeah. My That's uncle? Nice. Uh, he's from Iran. His name is Saeed, and uh, he's like the nicest guy you'll ever meet. I, I think it would be so wrong for like anyone to just think he's bad just because he's from the Middle East. He's so yeah. nice. He's your cool. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, that's cool. Uncle. That's awesome. Uncle that's cool. Saeed. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you think about it, what is America? Yeah, right. it's, 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 it's immigrants. Yeah, I mean, people like, came here to have a better I mean, life. We all just need to work together and not. Yeah. Um, hurt each other. And along it's with kind of, yeah, it's kind of, we gotta have respect for our own country, like love our own yeah. country, and, yeah. but, but we respect. also we also have to respect the, pat the patriotism of other countries it's because also they love their country just yeah. as much as, as we, we love do, ours. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So we gotta respect that. We've been thinking about the people living in this country who might feel afraid or who are being blamed for the attack just because they are of Arab descent. Erica of New Mexico also feels this way. She wrote, I feel very sorry for all the Muslim Americans who are being harmed because of what has happened. It wasn't their fault at all. Because of this, we want you to meet a Muslim girl who is an American living in Massachusetts. Hi, I'm Lana and I live in Western Massachusetts. I'm 12 years old and I'm in the seventh grade. And my mom is from Lebanon and my dad is from Palestine. And I'm an Arab American. From the past week, I was pretty sad. My family, we lit some candles because even when I came home from school that day, I was still really mad and sad. When I was in class the next day after the attack, when this kid told one of my friends that all Muslims should go to concentration camp, and that just made me really mad. We went to talk to him. We told him that it was wrong and that he shouldn't say that kind of thing. He said that he was sorry and that he didn't mean it like that. It made me feel proud and happy that I had gone up to the kid and told him that he had done something wrong. I think it's important that kids know that the Arabs that are here, they're just like them. This is my room. This is my sister. And this is my bed. Here is where I study. This is our holy book, which is called the Quran. And inside are all the prayers written in Arabic, which you read from right to left. The basic message that the Quran is teaching you is how to be a better person. One way of being a better person is by not lying and not hurting any living thing. Do you know what Islam means? It means peace. I'm going to show you how to write friend in Arabic. Friend, sahib. We pray five times a day. 
you should pray on a clean floor or on this rug. When you pray, you should make sure that you are facing the Kaaba in Mecca, which is in Saudi Arabia. The Kaaba is our holy place. Women should wear a scarf over their head to cover their hair. So there you have it, that's me. <laughs> now, more than ever, it's important that we all be tolerant of people who might be different from us and that we don't take out our anger and fear on them. After watching the show, we hope you can see that kids all over the country are finding ways to express their feelings about the terrorist attacks. Kids, with the help of adults, are also figuring out how to better understand these events. They're also finding ways to help out in their neighborhoods and strengthen the bonds in their communities. Just like Kelly of Connecticut, who wrote, Last night, every person in my town was outside with their flags and candles. Every race and religion joined one another and it was the most beautiful thing ever. We should all unite as one, because that's what the United States are all about. If tomorrow all the things were gone, I'd worked for all my life, and I'd have to start again with just my family in my life. I would thank my lucky stars to be living here today, cause the flag still stands for freedom, and they can take that. To be an American Where at least I know I'm free And I won't forget The man who died And gave that right to me And I proudly stand up Next to you And a vendor still today Cause there ain't no doubt I love this land God bless There ain't no doubt I love this land God bless the U.S. of A. Thank you. Visit the Zoom response section of the Zoom website. There you can share your feelings with other Zoomers. And parents and caregivers, if you're looking for resources and tips on how to help your children cope with their feelings, fears, and questions, there is also information for you at Zoom Responds at the Zoom website at pbskids.org. Funding for Zoom is provided by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, a private corporation funded by the American people, and by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thanks! A production of WGBH Boston.